And that's what the problem is, that they never take somebody from the bottom up. They never take, you know, I heard that club helium. Yeah. You know, I heard something very interesting about the owner, that before he opened up the club, he hired comedians. He paid, like, five comedians to sit with him. He went across the country, and he paid comedians to tell him what they liked and didn't like about clubs. You know, and when you go to Helium, you know, when you go to Helium in Philly, it's no fucking Taj Mahal. I mean, they haven't fixed the air in 20 fucking years. <laughs> but get something to eat there. Order a drink at, at Helium. See how fast you get it. You know, order food. See how fucking fast you get it. The green room's great. I love the green yeah, room. Go to the one in Portland. Order a Cuban sandwich. What do I hate more than hummus? Bad Cuban sandwiches? What do I hate more than hummus? Ranch dressing? They have a spicy red ranch dressing in Portland, Oregon. That they give you with tater tots. Must I say any more? Spicy, spicy ranch dressing that's red. I didn't even know it was spicy ranch. You ate it? Ate it, and oh, it no. was like, this is brilliant. Yeah. And then she told me what it was, and I almost swallowed my fucking tongue. <laughs> okay? I'm talking, you know, they treat you right. They put you in a medium hotel. And this is what you do. He's smart as fuck. Uh, Mark yeah. Gross. Is Mark his Gross. Name. He's, he came up to me, and he was talking. we were talking about the podcast, and we were talking about... Uh, about like what? he'll do a weekend of podcast. Yeah, he believes in podcasts. Go to a club and go. I want to do a weekend of podcast. They'll go. Go. It's not going to work in my club. Really? It's like somebody fucking. Let's talk about it. Mrs. Pat's manager told her not to do a podcast. Because, what? So, this is what I'm talking about. How management and agencies and sometimes who's Mrs. Pat's be, manager some fucking dude and, and maybe but this is just to let you know that what goes on in uh, comedy like the, when people get involved like I have a friend that's really fucking talented and I used to catch him on the phone with his managers and he'd be going over material and I'd ask him what the fuck are you doing well if you want to build a show you got to have a certain type of material. That guy's a fucking jerk off. That guy's a hard time writing a letter to his mother. And you're going to ask him how to write a fucking joke. But it's kind of sad that a lot of times those people will succeed. And, yeah, the, the reality shows or the show might fail, but they don't get fired. Like, I, I can't believe how many people probably don't if get you, fired. Listen, 50 million, you're getting fucking fired. Well, that Lee. one probably You're is. getting fucking yeah. fired, okay? 50 fucking million dollars. You sat there with your stupid suit and your white teeth and your suntan and told me how it was going to fucking work, okay? And it didn't. What the fuck do you have to say? Yeah, well, then... You're fired. That one, yeah, but most people, like, the, I, I was driving down... Be a fucking writer and come up with a... Shoot a pilot for a network and the show gets canceled at the four times. When will they see that writer again? The next day? You think he's going to have... They're going to see him the next day? you falling off fucking grace. No, that's true. But I was driving down Sunset, and that girl from Will and Grace has a new TV show. Deborah Messing. That, I'm sure she's a very nice lady. I'm sure everyone working on it is very nice. But that show looks terrible. And then they have a TV show coming out called, like, Blackish on ABC or CBS. Deborah that's Messing had a show on for seven years. The difference between her and Joe Diaz, whether she's not funny or, or this fucking mud over here, is that it's a proven winner. For seven years. Why do you think they keep putting VIP on? How much? How many more shows are they going to give that fucking lady from Seinfeld? How many more fucking shows are they going to give that fucking lady? How many more? A thousand. Okay, then. But <coughs> when, when they go on with <coughs> Burke Kreischer, who's funnier than hell, and they're like, let's put, let's put Burke Kreischer on. Well, no. She's had a successful... And you sit there going, Seinfeld was 15 fucking years ago. It doesn't matter. Right. They're going to keep giving her shows. Andy Dick will be on TV, even though he takes his dick out 80 times. Bert, this kid's a nice kid. He don't do fucking drugs. He's got a nice family, nice wife, funny, sells tickets. Would HBO give him a special? Would they even consider it? No, no, no. They give Rob Klein a special. And they give the guy that gets arrested 80 times. That Cat doesn't Williams, give yeah. a fuck about society. I, I'm a fan of Cats, but you cannot put your logic to it. You know, uh, they gave Dane Cook one, but the, this the Bill Burr is a great comic. How come they didn't give Bill Burr a special? No, they'll give some old fucking comic from twenty fucking years ago a special. Rob Klein. They need to name. sell it. They need to sell it up the ladder too. So they can't just come in and go. Burr's funny. They need someone. That, their boss goes, "Who's Burr? I've never heard of him. I, I'm I'm the head of comedy development. If I've never heard of Burr, then you don't know what the fuck you're talking about." No, and and that's why I'm I'm kind of I'm happy I'm out of working in television. It's just. They have hold. I, I worked at a, one production company that had a development department 
that I wor- must have worked on 50 sizzle reels. Not one of them ever made it to TV. It took them four years to get something made. And it's just... And these people are making... Like, I was making 10 bucks an hour, and these people are making 120 grand a year rolling in in their morning in their, in their Mercedes, and they haven't... And they haven't done anything. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. 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 But yeah. then you run into execs that do know what they're fucking doing. Oh, no, there's definitely something. When you run into ones that you do know what you're doing, you'll do fucking any, You'll jump through Well, they've been in the business for, for 30 years. Yeah. They started on a show as a writer. They knew something. They moved them up. They were somewhere. You know, they, they know the business backwards and frontwards. You know, I know comedy backwards and frontwards. <laughs> I could open up a comedy club and stop this shit on the road and do great with it. Because we know the fucking business. My God, calling is comedy. I wonder if I could. Yeah, my calling is comedy. But you think about it. How come Tim Allen hasn't opened up a chain of comedy clubs? Like fucking Roseanne Barr. It would be the easy fucking thing to put the improvs out of business. Any top comedian. Dane Cook could lock up the fucking improvs tomorrow if he wanted. But at what point, like at what point do you, since you've been in it a while, do you have more knowledge? But at a certain point it seems like you get stuck in your own, in the old ways and that's when new people new things don't happen. Like at a, it seems like at a certain point it goes from you have a lot of experience and then you're just stubborn and nothing changes. Like it's like it's a weird transition. Well, you know if anything about me that I'm not stubborn. I not not you. You know that I give everything a shot. There's a, a certain era of comics, the ones before like Rogan, like uh, Angel, uh, Bobby Slayton, Wendy Liebman, Felicia. They're a grab of, above us. I've always found that those older guys, like none of them have podcasts. Angel doesn't even have a Twitter page. You know, uh, they do things, you know, uh, the way they do things. Ralphie does things the way he does things. I yeah. argue with Ralphie all the time. He does. We all have ways, but you have to listen, and some way you have to, there's a pattern. And you learn from other comics what they do and fail with. But what might fail for Bert might work for me. What might fail for me might work for Bert. Yeah. So you live and learn from experience. You know, how many times have you said something to me and I've hit you with an answer already thought out? And you're like, how'd you know that? I've been doing this for 20 fucking years. Mm -hmm. We had a friend that used to want to replace podcasts with videos. And I used to say all the time, the videos aren't going to work. And against me, she'd always make fucking videos. And they'd get 130 fucking hits. The three hours you put into that video... One hour, you could have been writing a fucking joke and gotten more mileage off that fucking joke. There's just little things that you just fucking know because you've done them a thousand fucking times. You know, I'll take a comic that's been doing comedy for two years and say, look, don't don't go nowhere where you ain't supposed to be. Every comic has heard that line. Guess what? Bert don't know what he's talking about. I'm going out of the improv. I'm going to do ten minutes. And then I bomb. He told you that for a fucking reason. I've been doing this for so long. When a comic is telling me something, I already know the outcome before they're telling me. They're telling me their story, and I already know what the fuck happened. I already know what happened, how it happened. But he called me. Listen, they didn't call you. (laughs) They didn't call you. But you don't want to call them out. You don't want to argue with nobody. You hear their story, you tell them whatever. But I know before you're telling me the move, what you did.